Hey, welcome to Church Online. It's so good to be able to share the word and the message with you today. Uh, my name is Sue Owen. If you're just checking in for the first time and you are so welcome to join with us. We're mindful that now that church is online, it can be reaching countries we've never even had the opportunity to visit yet. We're mindful of folks that may never normally want to go to church. Actually, we're privileged that you would come and have a look, that you would spend time with us. So I'm just going to ask the Lord to bless this time and get straight into some teaching. I'm mindful, folks, of the messages that you're sending. And we're hearing of people healed of cancer. We're hearing of people getting the new job that they so needed. So if you've got a particular practical need and you want us to pray with you, hang around to the end of the program because there'll be pastors ready, waiting to stand and agree with you for a good blessing and a good breakthrough. But right now, I'm just going to commend this time to the Lord. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you would have your way, that you would help me say words that are relevant, that you'd give me uh, inspiration from the scriptures that we share together today to answer questions, to meet needs, and to inspire people who are flagging in faith right now. Lord, I thank you that you send your grace, Lord. You, he you help us and you heal even when we let your word loose. And we're trusting you for good things today. Not this same old, same old, but something new that will set us on a path and a course for blessing. In Jesus' name, I just give you the glory and pray grace, grace, grace right now. Amen. Do you know, folks, we've had an amazing weekend. We've had the International Leaders Day with leaders and pastors connecting from all over the world. We've had the Indian conference online as well with all of our apostolic team in India. And I want to encourage you, if you're a leader, there are lots of great courses for you to connect with so that you can grow and feel supported. Even locally, we're told churches are struggling because of the digital and the, uh, the restrictions, the kind of technical stuff. And then how do we get back into into the room together. But we must not do it alone. And I want to uh, encourage you and invite you to connect with us for support, for help, for, for resources maybe, or for prayer, or even for friendship. You are so welcome to come along board and join up with us. Just click on the links at the end of this message. I know that last time I shared, it was the five Ps to weather the winter, really practical Ps about being positive, checking our position, looking at uh, what we can possess, take possession, praising, and things like that, staying persistent, I think, was the fifth one or the fourth one. But today I'm looking at how we can play our part because I'm so mindful, folks, that in today's world, everything's changing. 30 to 50,000 churches in America are closing. Many people have backslidden. Is your family struggling with faith right now? Are your children wanting to rather go play? Or are your teens thinking, my world has changed shape completely. I don't want to go back to that church. I pray in Jesus' name that even in this message, you'll get answers. Playing our part, what does that mean? We need to start with life. And we find a scripture in Deuteronomy, and it's verse uh, chapter 30, verses 19 to 20. And we read it together. I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I've set before you life and death the blessings and the curses, therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live and may love the Lord your God and obey his voice and cling to him. We're called to cling to God during this season of immense change for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I'm so mindful that it's easy to cling to the latest news, the loudest voice, the worrisome things, because we, we kind of default sometimes in hum, you know, human nature defaults to worry. Whereas this is saying, no, choose life. Where do we find life? Point number two is that Jesus is life. Jesus is life. In John 14 and verse six, we find him telling us, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, when we find that verse becoming real to us, and I'm praying that if you're watching this and you've never given your heart, your future, your eternity to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you might do it today, that you might trust him, you might believe. Because this scripture in John 14, 6 is saying that Jesus is saying, I'm the way, I'm the road, I'm the highway for you. I am the means 
and the mode of your journey. He's not always and only just telling us where to go, but he's helping us to get there. He actually is the progress of our pathway. We can do it in Christ. We do it through Christ. We live because we've allowed him to take over our lives. We don't live for Jesus. We live with Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The word truth means truly and the truth revealed. There's nothing dark or sinister or difficult about Jesus. And that word life means everything that's lively and quick, everything that's breathing fresh air even. Even the plants breathe fresh air. The life in there is full of freshness. And actually that word life means vital principle. I just want to bring us back for a second though to this word way. Because you know, when you think of Jesus, he takes us all the way. And in fact, when we step in for a second to Ephesians 2, 6, we find that he has raised us up to be seated with Christ lifted us up from the grave into glory. You might think, I don't know how to follow Jesus. Well, you start with one step and you believe that he's lifting you from the grave to glory. In, along with Christ, it says here, where we sit with him in the heavenly realms, all because of what Christ Jesus has done for us. We can fall into the trap, folks, of thinking that by playing our part, we're doing enough to earn salvation. We can fall into the trap, folks, of thinking by living a good life, we will find salvation. We'll have access to the Father. We'll have an eternal, secure, set position. But actually, we need to receive Jesus because he's the way into heaven. We need to trust Jesus because he is absolute truth. And we need to enjoy life because he said, I came to give you it in all of its abundance. And he's surely set us for great things, but we can live in victory today. You may be worrying about COVID. Every week we have the praying for you at destiny-church.com email sent out to people. And there are hundreds of calls coming in, hundreds of emails coming in. People praying, will, you know, asking us to pray, will you remember my child? They're suffering with schizophrenia. Someone else said, they wanted us to pray that revival would break out in their community, in their streets and in their, their wee estate there. Someone else asked, would you pray that we learn to live in the supernatural because what we have had so far is not enough. And I'm asking also for you, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit by the end of this session today, that is a vital experience that you must enjoy. And our pastors are also here ready to pray with and for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except by me. But he also said he had to leave. And that's why he died and rose again, to pay the price for our sin. But he said, I'll send you a helper. Let's look in John 14. And I think we're jumping across to verse 26. How we play our part is immediately by choosing life. Secondly, by realizing that Jesus is our life. And then thirdly, that he said, I'm going to send you a helper. And here we find it in John 14, 26. Jesus said, but the comforter, the counselor, the helper, he's not here to condemn you if you're born again. He's here to support you and strengthen you. We go on to read, he's our intercessor. He's standing on our behalf to see that we're strong. He's our advocate, our strengthener, and our standby. This is the Holy Spirit. He's not someone to fear. Neither for sure is he someone to ignore. Jesus sent him on purpose to be alongside us. This verse goes on to say, this is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He'll teach you all things. We're going on a journey today, folks, because Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to become my representative. And we were also called to be his representatives, but the only way we can do it is by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and help us. We see there, it says, he'll teach you all things. You know, when you pray with your Bible open, you're on a good um, journey to learn something new. When you pray and ask the Holy Ghost to take you into a specific place, you're, you're set up well to receive revelation, to receive divine instruction. I would encourage you to do that. It says here in, again, John 14, 26, he, the Holy Spirit, will cause you to recall 
and will remind you of and bring to your remembrance everything I've told you. Recently, I was in Destiny College. I had to teach. Here I'm used to five times three hour sessions. In the one day, I realized I've got two two hour sessions. I really was thrown on to God to teach about faith from a position of faith. What happened? Right until the last minute, the Lord didn't give me any instruction. I felt so challenged, I've got to be honest. I felt really challenged. But just as I'm leaving the house, having done all the other things that the Lord told me to do, he said, stand with your notebook, your pen, and write these numbers down. And I had faith to live by in my hand. And he gave me a random bunch of numbers. And sure enough, those 10 scriptures, in fact, there were more than enough, nine of the 10 scriptures fitted that two hour session perfectly and took us on a journey. And the Holy Ghost knew how to help me. But my part in it was trusting him and clinging on to him, hanging on to him to, to receive that inspiration. So yeah, choose life. Jesus is our life and the Holy Spirit's been sent, sent to be our helper. God doesn't call us to small things. He doesn't call us to insignificant things, but he will not leave us standing there alone. We have to live this life with him. Maybe you're sensing a call on, on your life today and you, you just really want to serve God. Your, your whole world has changed shape, but actually it's the Holy Ghost that's talking to you about taking a different pathway. Reach into the pastors. They would pray for you to hear the direction of the Holy Ghost, to know how to outwork your call. We have older ladies who write letters. We have younger women who present on TV and, and doing the church online and sing all the songs. We've got young men that drive the vans to deliver food. We've got every aged person making food in the kitchens. We have people who are uh, supporting the pastors when we're in the meetings and afforded the opportunity to be together. They're praying and setting up the room so it's a warm welcome. Lighten the candles, if you will. You know, we've, we're having to adapt continually, but God wants you to play your part. You may think, I don't need them in my group, but you know what? I want to confront you, if I may use that phrase. Your group might need you. Could you please just rally that generous heart all over again and be there for them? Be willing to turn up, to encourage, to love, to support, to pray with, to even just sit and listen. Loneliness is killing people today and you might be needed. You might think I've outgrown the group. They, they, don't, they don't feed me anymore. Maybe that's not your purpose. Maybe you're supposed to feed yourself in a, some other zone, in some other place, t tuning into some teaching, but you're only in the group so that you can go and give. We've got to realize that we must play our part. Be willing, be flexible, allow the Holy Spirit to stir in you the part that you're to play. We need to serve our Saviour. How do we do that? Colossians 3.17 tells us, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You know, it's through Christ that we can even serve, but it's for him that we actually do serve. We're not trying to earn points. We're not trying to um, show how mature we are or how clever or gifted we are. It really is about picking up a sword or picking up a plow and doing something with it, making a difference in the place that we are living. I'm conscious that some of you are watching today and you serve, but you serve really reluctantly. Please check your heart. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Check your spirit that what you bring is full of life. Check your approach and your vocabulary, that you come in with an attitude of gratitude and faith and, and that you, you bring love and life into the situation. When I'm making a cup of tea for Andrew at home or making the salad, he's a great cook, by the way. Maybe you could come to ours one day for some food or maybe a, a bonfire and jacket potatoes outside. But, you know, when I'm making him a cup of tea, he says, do it with love, Sue. So I pray over it because sometimes... When I was a kid, I used to hate having to do things like that. My mum and dad would tell you I was very, very reluctant to just follow instructions. I've, I've had to learn to become a follower. I wasn't a good follower when I was a child. And in fact, that really made an impact on my dad. When I got saved and I started to change, he could not get away from the difference. And that was one of the major things that caused him to reach for salvation for himself because he knew I couldn't manufacture that. He did it. The Lord himself did that. 
But you know, this fourth um, point, serve your saviour, really does challenge us because some of us don't know where we fit. We don't know what we're to bring. We don't know what kind of gifting God's given us. Some of us want to be this, but the Lord's asking us to be that. I would say just, you know, check your heart, bring in what's needed on the day to the equation to make a difference. If they don't need any more singers, but they need someone to make sure the place is tidy, come on, let's just do that. If they don't need any more um, food makers, maybe you could go and do something else that's more of a packaging role or a delivering role or a checking of the, the shopping list role. I, there are so many things. To serve the Lord, you can be so much more than a preacher or a worship leader. I was thinking the other day of all the different groups and clubs I've run over the years, just to try and meet need. I remember the food and fuel crisis that, in fact, every year hits the news. And it broke my heart one year because I'd followed this little van through the streets of our city. And I kept wondering, I, what's GOPWA? What's GOPWA? G-O-P-W-A. And it turns out that it's the Glasgow Old People's Welfare Association because I'd looked online to see who GOPWA were. And when I read it, it made me cry because the stats and the information on the front page said, we have no services over the weekend, so therefore we find all the people on the Monday morning, the elderly who have died at the weekend. And it broke my heart, folks. I thought, what can we do? It's no good reading something and getting stirred up and not offering to help. And I prayed over it, and I remember committing with a close, really lovely girl, friend, who she was helping to make this happen. And together we committed to six months of Saturday, Sunday morning, breakfast club in the building. And we got everything polka dot, beautiful, just a fun thing that would make us smile. And we set it up every Saturday and every Sunday. Many people, well, the locals said, can you do bacon and egg? And I remember saying, we're working hard to do the porridge. I remember one man came for his porridge and it really blessed us that he kept coming for the breakfast and we would set the thing up for him even, just for him. And one day it was a bit like Goldilocks and the, the three bears because he said, call this porridge, this is kind of, and he used a word that maybe we wouldn't use in church. He said, I want to be able to stand my spoon up in your porridge. So sure enough, we whisked it off the table, ran away to the kitchen, boiled it for a, new, a few more minutes and I took a photograph of him with his spoon standing up in the porridge. Why am I telling you this? Right there, I needed to learn what does it feel like to help? What does it look like to really roll your sleeves up? And how could I even, probably more realistically, how could I encourage other people to do something? Saturday morning at seven, Sunday morning at seven, two and a half, three hours maybe, I don't even know if it was longer than that. We were here for the duration of September to March we didn't miss any weekend, so we were here the Christmas weekend and we were here the New Year weekend. Between us, we covered the gap and we fulfilled the commitment we said we would. And I realized I couldn't expect something from someone else if I'm not willing to actually roll my sleeves up. I've, I've sensed God's taken me on that journey many a time to be real about serving the Lord. Other clubs that we've done, we've done mini diamonds where we just set a different type of table and it's purely about relationship, which actually is my heart. It's about relationship. Presentation, performance, I'm hoping I'm catching up with that. But relationship, we have got to look people in the eye and ask them how they're doing. I was driving along home after one college session one day and I saw a man standing on a bridge, it's about 18 months ago, and I remember thinking, go back, that just does not look right. All the while I'm trying to talk myself out of it, all the while I'm wondering, what will I say? All the while I'm thinking, could I even begin to help someone in that situation? I had to keep going, because this was a dual carriageway. By the time I got back, probably six minutes later, the police was standing by his side and talking to him, holding his arm. And God just said, he's taken care of, don't worry. But I don't know about you, the Lord stops me and says, go back. The Lord startles me sometimes and says, take notice. The Lord stops me in my tracks some days and says, on you. He did that to me today. 
Lord, get on your knees and pray about such and such. You take authority right now. So I went to a quiet place and I just knelt down and I gave the situation to him. And I know when we pray according to his will and his plan, we can come with boldness. We can come with accuracy. We can come with faith. You know, I want you to know for sure this is about your life making a difference. So folks, play your part. Choose life. Realize that Jesus is life and that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everything's in turmoil, but Jesus is the same. Don't backslide during this season. Realize also that he sent the Holy Spirit to come right alongside of you. I often say the Holy Spirit's your secret weapon. Don't run ahead of the Holy Ghost. Neither hang back in fear of the, the instructions you've been given. Learn to listen carefully. Learn to incline your ear. Learn to get accurate with what he's asking you to do. He'll not give you a big task if you won't be willing to stop for the small task. The Holy Ghost takes you on that journey and he's with you in it. And he says you're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be at the front and not behind, taking the control and the authority. Ephesians 2 there that we looked at a few minutes ago says we're seated with Christ. And actually, folks, as the church rises, we're to take real authority in the planet. And God is going to resource us. God is going to equip us. God is, God is going to cause our unity to really declare something that the world has never seen before. The next point I want to, to dwell on just for a few minutes before I pray for you is this whole thing of Philemon 6. And it's about finding your calling. Usually it takes me a good half an hour to an hour to say all these things, but I'm going to give you the bullet points. If you want more of Philemon 6 from me, maybe write to us, ask. Maybe step into the college zone and say, can I join the college this next time? Because I want to hear more on Philemon 6. The scripture says, and I pray that the participation in and the sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with Christ Jesus unto his glory. Now, right there, you've got that in the Amplified Classic. I've often said, if you like conversational faith, read the message, but don't trust it totally for its accuracy. If, you like, if you're a word nerd, then go into the Amplified Classic because it paints its picture. If you're maybe a passionate, emotional person, dip into the Passion Translation. All of these translations help you to understand the heart of God and, and to unravel the love letter that he's written in his word for you. As we look at this in the Amplified Classic, it says, I pray that the participation in and sharing of your faith, that word participation means you really must need, you really must take part and you need to contribute and give in. Stop complaining if you're not willing to get involved. To be able to produce and promote something uh, as we participate is actually describing to us the fact that we're going to bring something into existence. That breakfast club didn't exist until I did it. I often wondered why did we do that? Very quickly, one lady was saved from um, serious mental health issues. And I know some of you have asked us to pray for schizophrenic relatives. This lady had discharged herself from the hospital. She turned up at our breakfast club. In conversation, we were able to direct her to help. She'd left her meds behind, serious stuff. This word uh, in scripture about producing and promoting means you're gonna bring something into existence. You're gonna bring someone else's life from where they were going to where God wants them to be. You can make a difference in the lives of people. It means also to move forward and promote. When God asks you to do something, he never calls you to do something that takes everything backwards. He never calls you into something that is gonna grind to a halt. He wants to keep you moving forward. From the breakfast club, I found even that commitment of six months, absolutely continual, um, conscientious devotion, sharing it in college, the, break, um, the coffee stop over in Edinburgh was, was uh, created and another lady picked up the call and started a different project. So you can promote something even in the doing of what you're doing. That word produce means to bring into existence. It means to move it up and create a yield. When you sow seeds, I've made a few jokes on Facebook and Twitter and 
Instagram of growing things just for the sake of it because the lockdown felt a long time for some of us. And maybe your children need to be in, encouraged just to become creative. I've grown garlic, I've grown carrot tops, I've, I've grown lupins. I'm now looking at trying to divide geraniums. It's just things that can create a different conversation and help us to produce something of a fresh type that, that lifts your spirit even. This word uh, in, in the scripture goes to say, produce and promote a full recognition and appreciation and understanding. Recognition means you're gonna to start to identify your gifts. I'm not a great gardener. I'm not even a great host when it comes to making clubs, but I can inspire people. I think maybe that's part of my calling. I can inspire people. It means you, you start to put a validation on the, the part that you play in life. This word recogni recognition means to um, help to bring gratitude and appreciation means also with that to, to see as valid. There was a great interview recently and I'll close with this. I need to do Philemon 6 at another time again. But there was a great interview with Jason Leach that one of our pastors, Pastor Craig, shared with the, the uh, district leaders recently. Jason Leach openly shared his, he has a faith, but that he still today serves in church. And he actually addressed the churches. He said, if you are, are a church and you don't have a food bank, what are you doing? I was a bit shocked with that. I thought, that's strong speak. That is very specific. That is really um, practical, a practical challenge for people. I want you to know that your role, your part, Playing your part is to actually make a difference. It, the fact that you start to see and know what your gift is, which is where Destiny College plays its part in our world, what your gift is, which is where the mentoring of our pastors comes into to gear, or the team leadership, we've got ministry teams, we've got serving teams. We've so many different things here at Destiny. And if you're struggling or floundering, you can be mentored with us. Right now, folks, I'm gonna move on though, because I'm conscious that maybe you're watching this and you didn't get past um, Choose Life, and you certainly didn't ever ask Jesus into your life. I'm gonna pray two prayers ever so quickly. One is for you to be saved. The second is that you're filled with the Holy Spirit because it's only by the Holy Spirit helping us are we gonna make this difference and play our part. Come on, if you need Jesus as your, as your savior today, just use my words, but then get ready to click on the links. On um, Church Online, you request prayer after we've prayed on Facebook and YouTube, you click on the link and you will be immediately in touch with someone that can take this a lot more personally for you. If you need healing, click on the links, connect, don't walk away having not had your needs met. But let me pray, say these words with me, Father God, I thank you that Jesus died. He rose again to cleanse me of my sin. His blood was shed to give me forgiveness. His body was broken to secure my healing. I receive Jesus today, born again. Thank you, Father God, amen. If you said that prayer, I want you to let us know because we have a booklet we want to give you. It's the beginnings of your faith journey. You've only just begun. It doesn't end here, it begins here. Get on those links, reach to the pastors, send in your details. We'll, we'll give you this book, booklet for free. Let me pray just quickly for you that need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Open your hands and rest for a second, knowing that the Father himself is going to bless you and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Expect to speak in another language and just learn to praise him rapidly, fluently, beautifully and creatively through a different language. It's very natural. It's sent by the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for everyone watching today who knows they need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, in the name of Jesus, would you send your spirit? You give good gifts. I plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus that you would fill them with power today. You would receive, uh, they would receive the gift, the unction, the anointing of the Holy Spirit today in Jesus' name, that from the crown of the head to the soles of their feet, they would be empowered and enlivened and quickened by your spirit. We say thank you, God, and we bless your name today. Amen. We give you glory, Father. Amen. Folks, thank you so much 
for connecting with me. We've looked at some of these scriptures in depth, some really we've whizzed past, but I'm mindful that we are here for you. We're in the buildings, we're online, we're available. We've lots of different programs that you can connect with. Stay tuned for tonight's uh, breaking of bread time. Five o'clock we're on. We're gonna have a great time of talking and interviewing and praying together, very much praying together tonight because things need to shift in our nation. God bless you and I'll see you soon.